Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic Show. This is episode 524. We've got a returning guest. He was on only a few weeks ago, but he came up with a subject that I thought you all listeners and viewers want to hear about, and that's about how you get more sales from your leads and the methodologies and methods that you should be using in 2020 to achieve that. So I've got Paul back. Paul, would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers? Yes, my name is Paul Toby. I am the CEO of a digital marketing agency and training company known as Training Business Pros. And I also run a couple of online membership platforms like That's Ambitious and Jazz Mental. And I've got my great co-host, Adrian. Adrian, would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the new listeners and viewers? Hi, everyone. My name is Adrian. I'm the CEO and founder of Groundhog. We help small businesses launch their funnel, grow their list, and scale their business. And um, we were discussing this with Paul, and Paul was going to come up on the show at a later time, but we had a, a guest that had an a emergency and had to drop out at the last minute, and Paul was very gracious to say that he was available today to share his thoughts and ideas about this really important subject. So, Paul, um, how shall we start this really important conversation? Where, where shall we start on this windy road? So what's the number one thing you need to do in business to be successful? Sales. If you're not selling, it's not a business. It's a professional hobby. And I think many people who are in business or in the early entrepreneurial stages should, and as a prerequisite to understanding that business thrives on sales and without sales there's no cash flow and without cash flow there's no business as a prerequisite to foreshadowing more sales everyone should be taking some form of sales training yet statistically how many people do you think do that very few and i'm one of them well there's a couple of reasons for that number one people think that the product if it's good enough it will sell itself Number two is they're naturally likable, so they think they can sell anything to anyone. Well, that excludes me, doesn't it, Paul? <laughs> Thank uh, you. And number three, good sales training is actually hard to find. I think they're good jokes, Paul. You don't respond to them. You know, what you do, they, you give them, well, I know, I'm I, sorry. I'm right. laughing on the inside. Right, right. So if we start with that very premise that sales is the most important thing, why is it that people don't take sales training? And if you did take sales training, what would you actually learn? And so what I would like to share with you today is an actual template, which is a step-by-step -step formula on how to make an offer, not make a pitch, not sell, not oversell, but just make an offer. So if you sort of change the way you look at things, the things that you look at will start to change. We change the word pitch to offer, it automatically takes on a, well, I'm not really selling, I'm just making an offer because people don't like to sell. People don't like to sell because it feels uncomfortable because they don't like being sold too. So they think if they try to sell to somebody else, that will make them feel uncomfortable. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Yep. So if we start from there, then you have to think about, well, what is the medium today in 2020 that is accessible to everyone that would help me make more sales. And if I got into that medium, what would be the formula, formula and format to do that? And I think everybody's talking about presenting, especially during COVID times, right? Everything's turned to things like this, podcasting and Zoom meetings and just webinar presentations. It's all about video, 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 video. So what is the actual format in a video to make more sales? And that's what I'd like to share with you today. It's a format that I didn't create. I, I wanna preface that right off the bat. Um, I've learned in life that you don't get in trouble for borrowing other people's information. You don't get in trouble for cheating in real life. In, if you, we were in college and you had, you were taking a sales course in college, which by the way, does not exist. But if you were, and during the test at the end of the year, the 
the, the questions were multiple choice and you yelled across the room to your friend Adrian, you said, hey, Adrian, what's the answer to, to, to question three? And Adrian yells out, C. And you write C on your paper. You, you got in trouble for that. You would fail the exam because you asked for help. The problem is that trained us all not to ask for help in life. And I've learned in life that you get a lot further ahead if you work with people you trust and respect and you ask them for information and guidance based on things they've done before. So this sales template, I didn't make up. It's actually created by some of the most wealthy speakers and trainers on the planet, including Conrad Levinson, T. Harv Ecker, uh, Bob Proctor, and uh, sales dogs, uh, sales dogs. Um, <clears throat> can't remember his name right now. Uh, guys like Rob Riappel. They basically got together and they decided based on their co selective or collective experience to create this template that can be used in any presentation situation to get results. And before we share it with you, I'd like to turn it over to Adrian because I know that Adrian knows it well. Yeah, that's great. Over to and you, Adrian. I, I want to hear uh, a recent result that he has got with this particular uh, template. That's great. Yeah, so um, I've, been, I've been learning this particular template for a very, very, very long time. Um, and I recently deployed it for the first time in a webinar presentation for my business groundhog. I was on a webinar with buddy boss. I've actually, I promoted it a little bit a couple weeks past on, on this podcast. Uh, and we had about, I want to say 150 people on the call and utilizing the template that Paul's about to share with you. Uh, we sold all, we had a discount code for 20% off. Uh, and we were limiting that to 25 people to buy it. We have a, uh, a fairly, uh, it's not a cheap product. It's not the most expensive product on the market. So 25 people at our price point is pretty respectable. Uh, we sold out of that particular discount code to the point where people were like, you know, it's not working. And I'm like, well, that's because 25 people bought. So, and I think sales at the end of the call. So not, uh, and not including the residual sales of which I'm continuing to get from this particular call within the first, I want to say three hours of ending the call, we had, uh, made $7,500 in revenue. It's not, you know, enough to break the bank, but for an hour's time, it's certainly respectable. Well, I think that's a fantastic result. Um, cause you know, webinars, I still think webinars are powerful, but it's like everything online, everything's just getting more and more and more competitive, but to get that result, that's fantastic. So, Paul, can we dive in a little bit in, into this template then a little bit? We've got about five to 12 minutes before we've got to go for our break. So maybe you can give us a quick outline, which we'll develop in the second half of the show, Paul. So the first thing is during the presentation, uh, if you've heard from Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, you know, the concept of always be selling, please don't do that. That's the biggest mistake that people make. When you always go be closing. On, uh, yeah, all, all, sorry, always be closing, whatever, always be selling, always be closing. It, it's a mistake. When you do a presentation, especially when you're invited on a presentation, um, first of all, you must give value and that value should not come in the form of information because information does not solve problems. Give them step-by-step -step instructions, just like we're doing today. I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to follow a proven template for making more sales on the back end of a presentation. Step one is don't be always selling. Just give value in the form of step-by-step -step information for the majority of time that you're on the call. Okay. That's number one. If you constantly be talking, oh, my product this, and it's on sale and it's this and that, it's like people will just absolutely get turned off by that and that will not work. So when you get a good, say, if it's an hour presentation and you get a good 50 minutes into the presentation and you've handled the questions that came during the presentation, don't take questions before the close. If you take questions, you'll open up a rabbit's nest, a hornet's nest of really annoying, sometimes often comp uh, combative questions that can just get you sucked into the weeds and your, your, sale, your, your, your offer at the end will fall flat. So if you wanna take a few questions throughout the presentation, fine, but don't take them before the close. That's very key here. 
Then step one in the close is to do what we call the transition. You have to move away from information and step-by-step -step instruction into an offer. How do you make that transition? And there's two elements to that. The first is introduce to them the biggest problem that you believe your audience will have if they don't do take your offer. Start with that. And you can even say that, you know, the biggest problem that I think you're going to have moving forward is that you won't be able to follow up the prospects in a real and meaningful way. You won't be able to make uh, timely offers in specific places that can convert more sales. You won't be able to do this. You won't be able to do that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then what you do is right in conjunction with that, right after that is I have a one day, one year, three day coaching product, template, course, tip sheet, whatever it is, that, that will, in this amount of time, get this result. You're not giving them specifics about how it's going to do that. You're just telling them that if you, you know, the, the solution to your problem is to buy this specific name of course, name of coaching program, name of product, and then the benefits of actually doing that. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. So the transition is introduce their biggest problem and offer up a solution. Then, before talking about it, ask permission to do so. And I always say this, is it okay if I tell you a little bit about it? Now, I get in a webinar situation that you're not going to get a verbal response. But the fact that you asked shows a tremendous amount of humility. It also gives you psychological permission, if they say yes in their head, to go and make the offer. So that's... Those are the two sections. One, introduce the problem, offer up the solution, and two, ask permission to actually talk about it. Right, that's, I'll see that, that's fantastic. So maybe, um, so maybe in the second half, we can go through the process of applying this process to yeah, well, a webinar. There's still the webinar. like 13 more steps. Oh, oh right, well. Those are just put, step one and two. All right, so we'll just do our best. Um, and of course, you can stay on for some bonus content. So we've got, we got a lot to go through in the second half of the show, folks. We'll be back in a few moments. We're coming back. I need to do my adverts for my sponsors, which I forgot to do at the beginning of the show. So we're going to start off with Kinsta. And Kinsta only supports WordPress websites. They've been um, supporting um, WP Tonic for over three years. I've been using their hosting for a couple of years and it's just fantastic. If you've got a learning management system, a WooCommerce site for yourself or for your clients, you need better hosting than what you can get from a lot of hosting companies at the present moment. They will remain nameless. But if you go over to Kinsta, you will find what you're looking for. And I suggest you do that, not only for yourself, but for your clients. Go over there, have a look what they've got to offer. You're going to be blown away. I'm totally happy with their service. Highly recommend them. So go over there, buy one of their packages, and also tell them that you heard about them on the WP Tonic Show. Our sponsor is another great company in the WordPress space, and that's WP Fusion. Now, if you've got an external CRM system like Active Campaign, there's a host of them. Actually, WP Fusion supports over 200 different company services, which is amazing in its own fact. But what's the really important thing? If you're into marketing optimization and you're using WordPress with an external CRM, you need WP Fusion. Just go over to their website and learn more about their product. I'm sure I am definite that you're just going to be blown away by it. And also tell them when you buy one of their products, not only for yourself, but for your clients, that you heard about them on the WP Tonic show. So back up into this great discussion about sales process, which is hardly discussed. 
And I think a lot of our listeners and viewers who run small businesses are going to get great value from this discussion with Paul. So we've got a few more steps to discuss. So back over to you, Paul. So before I move into this, I, I need to remind people that this information, even though it was not developed by me, has been utilized over the last 14 years to create literally millions of dollars in sales from the, from the stage. And I don't say that to impress you. I say that to impress upon you that this is what I call the world's greatest offer template that you can utilize in any presentation situation to get more sales. I charge people $4,000 for a three-day course to, to do this and other presentation strategies. And I've trained over 500 speakers to do just that. Many of them who in their first presentation go out and literally make thousands of dollars in sales where they've never made sales before. So it's very, very powerful. And I would highly encourage people not to underestimate its efficacy in this particular situation, especially today when we're all doing presentations, when we're all trying to sell our products and services in a world full of noise. It cuts through the BS and goes straight to somebody's subconscious. It really hinges on people's uh, uh, subconscious and the way they psychologically filter offers. So it, it has been worked over the years by myself and, and my, my colleagues, but it was developed initially by some very powerful people. So I highly recommend that people research this. And I ha actually have a whole course in my That's Ambitious program that goes through this. So step one, just to review, the, the transition is move from step-by-step uh, -step content, don't take any questions, move into the problem and offer up the solution. Ask permission then to talk about the product. The next step is to actually name the product. And by the way, a name and a brand is very important in this situation. So uh, as soon as you, know, you get the psychological, yes, please tell us about it. It's like, it's called Groundhog. <laughs> and you just say it just like that. It's called Groundhog. And if you need to do a qualifier in that, you can do that. But I just, just name the product. Next, round up your audience. You know how they used to corral horses, right? With, you know, uh, with you know, riding around them in horses and they've got like lassos and they're, they're corralling horses. You have to do that with your audience. And how do you do that with an audience? You call them by name. This is for entrepreneurs, business owners, startups, digital marketing officers, doctors, lawyers, consultants, teachers, brothers, fathers, sisters, cousins, friends, Name them. And if somebody in your audience hears their name, they're going, oh, that's for me. If you don't round up your audience, they're sitting there going, I wonder if this works for me. But if you actually name your audience, you're rounding them up. And it's not for everybody. It's for these specific people. If you're trying to sell to everyone, Jonathan, you're selling to no one. Round up your specific audience and they will pay attention. Next. Now we lay out what they'll learn, what they'll get, or what, they will, what the product will do, and the key benefits of each. So for example, if Adrian is talking about Groundhog, well, actually, you know, let's switch topics because I, I, I love Groundhog as a product, but let, let's talk about maybe that's ambitious, right? My membership course. How do I lay out the key benefits? You will learn a step-by-step -step formula on how to sell any product or any service in five minutes at the end of your next presentation to create a minimum of 10 to 20, maybe even 15, 20% of your audience will buy within the first hour. You see what I did? Basically said, you're going to learn this thing to get this result. You're going to get this product that gets this result. You're going to learn how to do this specific thing that get this specific result. And you've got to have five or six really strong, really well-developed bullet points so that people go, I think I need that. Not I know I need that. I think I need that. Next. It's tough to do, but you're going to have to figure out a way to give them proof. So if you're giving step-by-step -step instructions to people in the content portion of your seminar or your webinar or your podcast, if you're giving step-by-step -step instructions, sometimes that's enough for people. But in many cases, they're going to, know who, going to want to know who else uses this. Has anybody used this and got a measurable result? 
And so you need to throw in a couple of testimonials. And you literally, like, if you can throw them up on the screen or read them and give the name of the person and the name of the website that it's on, the name of the company that's using it, that's enough proof for people to go, okay, they're in, I'll give it a shot. So the template is in this order, by the way. Don't put the testimonials up front. Don't put the, you know, ask permission up front. It's got to be in the same order. And if you want the exact order, I have a, a course uh, in That's Ambitious. It's like $49. I'll give them a coupon code. It'll, it'll actually run them through this step-by-step. -step. And I actually make an offer in the course. It's a two-hour course. And it's probably the most exciting sales course you've ever seen in your life. It's very, very step-by-step. -step, and it'll show you the ins and outs. So I'm going through it quickly. But if you want to go through the details, you want to actually make an offer in real time, go take that course in That's Ambitious. It's called sales training. It's exactly what it is. Here's how to make sales. Okay, a next. Fabulous price. For, was it, what you yeah, say? it's like $49. If you can't get a $49,000 idea from a $49 course, you're not listening. You didn't take the course. It's like six sections. You have to go through it. There's a workbook. You make your own offer while the course is going through. And I charge $49. Why? Because I don't need your $49. I just need you to invest something. Does that make sense? Invest yeah. something. So let's move on. So testimonials are done. Now you got to knock these things down again, one by one. First, you have to tell them the actual price or tuition. So for example, that's ambitious. Our tuition is $99 a month. That's it. Now they've got a benchmark, right? And if they're thinking, oh my God, $99, how can I afford that? That's way too expensive. If I were doing a live seminar, our train the trainer course is $3,997. Let that burn a hole in their subconscious. Okay. That's all you got to do. You don't have to go, oh, I think that's too expensive. You could throw up what I call a comparison price. There are other programs out there that you could pay $10,000 for. Our tuition is $3,997. Okay, next, introduce future bonuses. Right now, they're not bonuses, they're just alternatives. So for those of you who that doesn't work for, we have, you can purchase this course for $49, you can purchase that course for $49, whatever. Have at least two or three options, what I call future bonuses. Why are they called future bonuses? Because you're gonna include them in the tuition at the final offer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So. Right now, they're just options. People are going, oh, well, I can't really afford the $99 a month or the $3,997 for the course, but I can afford $49. You see, how, you see what's happening here? Okay. Now, you got to give them a reason to give them a deal. You can't just give them a deal. You got to give them a reason why it's on sale, right? Sidewalk sale means just that. It's a sidewalk sale. It only happens when there's a sidewalk sale. That's a reason. It's a shortened amount of time. Adrian goes on Buddy Boss. He gave them an offer. Why? Because I was invited by Buddy Boss and they made me treat you well. Uh, I was invited here by Jonathan Denwood. He promised that if I was going to talk about anything that I could give you some type of discount and I'm going to do well by him. Reason for the deal. Does that make sense? And the reason could be anything. Um, it's the last time I'm going to be doing it for a while. It's the first time I'm doing it and I want to make sure the course is filled. There's a whole pile of reasons that I've worked out over the years that, that will actually work. You can even blame it on the weather if you wanted to. I have to give you a deal because it's Vancouver and it's the only sunny day of the year. And I know that you took time out of your life to come here and see me on a sunny day. By the way, just uh, one, uh, one time I went to Vancouver for a presentation. I had 75 people registered, right? In the days when we were still doing presentations, five people showed up. I asked the person in the front row, I showed them the registration list. I said, where are all these people? And the guy goes, didn't you hear? And I hear, go hear what? And he goes, it's sunny outside. Next, give them a limitation. If you don't give them a limitation, which is time or quantity, like Adrian gave them 25 people. What happened, Adrian? Uh, you're a mood to thanks. All, all 25 people signed up. Yeah, why? Be because there's 150 people on the call. Exactly. So, so exactly, that's a limitation, right? You say, well, this for the first 25 people and people are like, if you don't give them a limitation, they'll be like, oh, let me think about it. And then they'll miss out. All the people that emailed Adrian when they missed out on the deal saying, where's my deal? And Adrian said, it was for 25 people. Where were you? You had two hours to make that decision. 
right? So the, the offer's good till midnight, the offer's good for the first 25 people, whatever. Next. Now you include the, the, the alternative programs. When you purchase it, not if, when you purchase today, we'll, you can get into That's Ambitious for $99, but we'll include this, which is $49, this, which is $49, and this webinar just for the people that are on today for this you know, mastermind or whatever at a value of $200. Make the value of the bonuses twice as much as the actual offer that you're making them, but things that don't cost you money, just your time. Then what you have to do is you have to offer them payment options. We take Visa, MasterCard, American Express, PayPal, uh, Firstborn Child, IOUs, um, checks, personal checks, company checks, whatever. You give them a list of all the things you'll take because they, they don't know what to do. They're like, oh, I don't know how to, per can, I, can I pay with PayPal? Okay. Name it. You have to name it. Next, give them a guarantee. 100%. You have 14 days to do this thing or without a single question, I will personally go into the payment section and refund your money. You don't, need to, you don't need to tell me why. You don't need to give me a bunch of reasons. You just need to go. This is what's called risk reversal and it reverses all the risk from them and puts it onto you. So now they're getting $400 worth of value for 99 bucks and they get 14 days to try it out. What's there to think about, Jonathan? Not a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Next, close them. If they're really serious about buying the product, there isn't. Yes, thank you. Clo well, they should be if they're still here at the end of the presentation. Uh, well, people are strange animals, Paul, as you know. Well, it's not for everybody. But if you rounded up your audience properly, there's a good chance because of this template that they'll still be here. Right? And that's what we're you know, you know um, I don't know how big buddy boss's email list was i don't know how big a community i know they got a quite a large facebook community um it's just interesting because it's a um, it's interesting that they you know they i don't know how long the webinar was promoted or how effectively they promoted the webinar I, i'm trying to get more involved in webinars and forcing myself to do one every month just as a learning exercise. So there's a couple of things to know about uh, just the registration process, not, not, not the close, which is what we're talking about here, which is when people are already on the webinar. But in terms of the pre-registration process for people, by the way, we had more people at the end of the webinar for the Buddy Boss than we did at the beginning uh, because people showed up late, and, but, but we had a very low, not, a very small number of people left the call because we had more people at the end of the call than we did at the beginning. So there's something to be said for the, for the template being able to keep people engaged. Um, so I'll just throw that out there. Uh, there's only ever like a 30% show up, right? There's, there's a 60% no-show rate. That's just the end of it. We had 600 people actually registered and we had wow. 150 or something actually show up. So that's actually a little bit less than 30%. And how that's, long was they promoting it for actually? Uh, that, that was with a 14 day promotion period. Mm -hmm. So pe pe people have a really hard time <coughs> committing to things that are too far out. Uh, and they have to, they have a difficult time committing to things that are too, too close. So 14 to how, what's three weeks. So 14 plus some, so 14 to 21 days is kind of like the sweet spot in terms of commitment, making a commitment level. So yeah, just, I, just, I, I pose, no, I'm going to throw those numbers out there for pre-registration. I think Adrian makes a great point. It's you got to get people on the thing or you got no one to make an offer to. So let's assume that your content was engaging. Let's assume you've rounded up your audience and let's assume people are still here. If they're still here, the template holds, make sure you offer them a, a very sound, very, a guarantee that makes sense. Don't assume that they know that there is one. Don't assume they've gone to your website and read your terms and conditions. Don't assume that they know anything about that. They have to, you have to state it very clearly. So, then you have to tell them what to do, which is what I call the call to action. If you just say, go buy, that's not good enough. You have to tell them 
where you have to give them a specific url if it's if they're on a zoom call you have to give them a very simple url to follow you have to post it in the chat area you have to send it by email you have to follow up follow up follow up but you basically in the call say you're going to go to this web page you're going to click this button you're going to put in this coupon code and you're going to use the payment options that we laid out for you we're going to have to, we're going to, have to um, call it a day for the podcast part of the show because I like to keep it around 30 minutes to 35 minutes. Um, but hopefully you can stay on for some bonus content because we only scratch the, scratch the surface of this. You have to also come back again because it is a big subject. I love, I love also to talk about how to get the audience to the presentation part as well. Um, because I think our audience and everybody in the WordPress community or in, you know, um, needs to know how to do that. So Paul, how can they find out more about you? And also maybe, um, also you can say how about this sales course that you offer for a very reasonable price as well. Go to thatsambitious.com. Why is it called That's Ambitious? Because it's a very ambitious program and that's what my wife called it after we came up with the concept. There's well over 100 hours of training in there. If you go to thatsambitious.com and you use the coupon code WPTONIC, which should be easy to remember, coupon code WPTONIC on any product, including membership and single or multiple courses that you just wanna purchase, it's 50% off that. Well, and that, that's a fantastic offer. Thank you for uh, for that offer to our to our tribe. I think of course, I would I think I might take it up myself actually. So if you're listening, listeners, beloved listeners of yours, I suggest that you take it up. Agent's been very quiet, but um, obviously we've been going through a lot of stuff. So Agent, how can people find out more about you and your great product? Uh, so you can find me at groundhog with two G's dot IO where you can pick up some pretty nifty software that'll help you launch your funnel, grow your list and scale your business. And join us for the bonus content that we're going to be going through with Paul. How do you listen to that? Go to the WP Tonic YouTube channel. That's the quickest place that I put the bonus and the full interview on and also register our YouTube channel, um, tribe is increasing increased last month considerably so go to the wp tonic youtube channel and also register that really helps the show and you get notification of all the shows that are put on the wp tonic youtube channel automatically so that's a great benefit as well we'll see you next week with another great guest and another great interview see you soon folks bye So on to the other steps, Paul, because we, we only scratched the surface. So maybe in the next 10, 15 minutes, we can go through some other key parts. How does that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. You want me to just keep going? Yep, just keep going. Just, uh... So if you viewed the WP Tonic show, and which was all about this sort of closing template or what I call the world's greatest offer template. Actually, in Train the Trainer, uh, I do call it um, the $250,000 marketing from the stage template. So why do I call it that? It's because that's how much money I earned in year one after adopting it. So it's a pretty, I wouldn't say it's like an earth shattering number, but when you're going from $0 in sales to 250,000 from the stage, in one year, that's a pretty solid template. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no to it. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I call it, or, you know, the world's greatest offer or whatever. There are many different offers, by the way. There's the qualified close. There's the, the, the spiritual close. There's a whole bunch of different closing templates that I've learned from people. But I think this is, it, it, it works in most situations and for most audiences. So this is the one I would recommend. So in addition to all of the steps that we just talked about, um, and I want to I want to reiterate when you get down to the numbers, it's really about deal bonus limitation guarantee. Right. And, and in train the trainer, we actually do this, you know, use your use your left hand. Right. Put your left hand in the air, go deal bonus. And then with your right foot limitation guarantee. 
deal bonus limitation guarantee with your fee deal bonus limitation guarantee and you get people to repeat that over and over again so that the next time they do a presentation they just don't forget it right it has to come in that order what is the deal what is the bonuses what is the limitation what is the guarantee okay so now that you've made your call to action right you said go to this web page take this coupon code plug it in take that offer okay you must say thank you just say the words thank you that's it you're done turn the music on take off go have a coffee do whatever just say thank you but don't go don't do things like this, this is what people make mistake oh wow it's such a great program you're crazy if you don't take it if you're not if you're not you know clicking the button now you're an idiot if you don't take this offer it's never going to come again it's like this you know, this whole sort of I, I don't want to center out Americans, but you know, they're, they're, they're masters at hard selling, right? This is a more sort of soft Canadian approach. Yeah, to I was going to ask you that because um, obviously this is the bonus content. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously these are, these are just generalizations, you know, so they must be treated in that way. You know, um, archetypes, generalizations, they do have truths in them but they are generalizations. So I'm just putting that out to the listeners and viewers. I noticed, um, do you think in general, uh, Americans actually expect a hard sell to some extent? Having done several hundred presentations throughout the United States over the years, the answer to that question is they will accept a hard sell almost more than any other country. There's a couple of reasons for that. Americans are what I call punters. They, they, they like the Hail Mary pass. They, they, they like to be pushed into something because a lot of times they don't have a problem spending money. They just don't. They're a very affluent nation because they spend money. And the reason why they, they got affluent and the reason why they're the greatest consumers on planet Earth is because they have money and they spend money. And they're not afraid to spend money. So a little bit of a hard sell for Americans is not a tough thing. Of course, we're generalizing, and I'm not saying that goes for everyone. I had to learn a little bit more. I, I had a mentor once called Brian Clemmer. He was a great salesperson off the stage, and we discussed this many times. He basically said, Paul, sometimes you just have to turn the heat up. <laughs> it's like if you want people to, to take the door to the seminar, you got to turn the heat up so high in the room. And the only way out of that room is to take the door to the next course. And that made a lot of sense to me. And I remember one day he saw that my first presentation one night, I sold two. The next day with that advice, I sold 18, which is a pretty significant turnaround. And all I did was crank the heat up a little bit. And so the template is sound, but there are certain phrases and things that you do. But when it's the end, Jonathan, this is very important. You say thank you and you do not qualify any further. And you right. certainly do not take questions. I think that's one of your, um, because on a lot of the webinars, I, I, I was saying that at the end, because um, the three the free I've done so far, um, I saw them more as educational webinars with a guest, and they could have a, have a, a special offer or a special deal, um, but I wasn't seeing them as a sales presentation really truthfully but you could argue that that makes it a total waste of time then doesn't it because i suppose we're all selling aren't we so, uh, i sometimes get offended when i go to somebody's presentation and i learn a ton and they're not making me any kind of deal they're no just, that's true they're just expecting me to go to their website and research them and, and and figure it out on my own why don't you just tell me what to do i'll go and do it so i think that's the other key point and i think it's um because I just want to put this to you. I think the two key things that I got from our conversation so far is that um, you you got to provide got guidership. You got to provide, you know, you do these steps. You don't expect them to know things. You, you got to lay it out. 
you've got to lay it out. And secondly, you don't take questions at the end of the presentation because you lose control. Well, you lose control, you get stuck in the weeds. And I don't mean to interrupt you, but what's happening when you take questions is inevitably you're going to get that person that didn't hear half the presentation that goes, well, what about this? And what about that? And everybody else is just like, well, shut the, shut the, you know, what up? I just want to go buy the thing. If you take questions, you'll get stuck so deeply into the weeds that you'll never get it out and people will talk themselves out of it by the end of the questions because somebody inevitably will have an objection somebody will have an, an alternative product well i bought this one over here and it's way cheaper and people are like oh i'll go check that out and by the time they check that out they've forgotten the first offer so absolutely no questions if you want do this stick around afterward after the presentation is over if you want and this only works for your own presentations it doesn't work when you're on somebody else's like buddy boss don't do this you can't do it with them it's, it's their time right but if it's your own presentation you just say this i'm going to hang out afterward because there's a lot of you that i see on this call that i've seen before and i haven't talked to you in a while let's just stick around and have a little chat inevitably somebody there will saying i've taken paul's courses they're amazing i've learned i've learned so much and earned so much by taking his courses and you know it's, it ends up being like a whole testimonial for like 20 minutes that's what it ends up being um but don't take questions about you know are there any questions about the offer if you haven't laid it out properly then you might need to take questions but that's what the template is for it's to answer every single question they have and absolutely, that's the end. Say thank you. Done. Go. Leave. Turn, I, on the, if I was on stage, I'd turn the music off. I'd go stand at the, uh, sit on the front of the stage, and inevitably people, one by one, will come up, and they'll stand in a line, and they'll ask questions. The only thing I'm doing then, Jonathan, if, is if I'm one-on-one, -on -one, is I'm trying to figure out what personality type they are. They're either a controller, analytic, uh, promoter, or supporter. If I can figure out which one they are within 30 seconds, I can probably get at least 20% of them to convert because the only reason they're standing in line is to give me a reason why they're not going to take the course. <laughs> uh, I, I, I have a question. Oh, go on. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, when, when I was doing the, the Buddy Boss thing, uh, we, we had a Q&A section at the end, but we were on a Zoom call. And when you're on a Zoom call, you have the Q&A section where people have to actually physically type something in so you get the advantage of pre-moderating the questions that you get to answer so if you're on that kind of system where people don't actually turn their mic on and say something which you can't control but you have the, the ability to pre-moderate uh is it okay to do questions then <coughs> yes it is okay because those questions won't stop but what you have to do is when you when you say pre-moderate you have to take the questions that you want to answer so Joe, and by the way, when you're answering those questions, Joe from Michigan asked this, he goes, Joe said, what's the deal? Well, I'm glad that you asked. And I actually, Adrian actually did this on the call. So yeah, I did. So there was like, either, he was about, so the Buddy Boss people were about to launch into a whole like Q and A for their new Zoom integration and, and everything. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm just like time out. Cause you know, you got to get the offer in there. A, a lot of people are asking, what does this cost? And, and that was, that was my you know, reason for the offer with the segue that Paul was talking about. I used that question as, a, as the segue into, well, here's the offer template. So it's, the problem here is, is that the buddy boss people don't know the template. So they interrupted Adrian's presentation by asking if there's questions. Now, Adrian doesn't have the ability to control that. So what he did instead was he took questions, but he moderated and did the transition based on the question. So you remember when we went from transition problem to solution yeah. to asking permission? I was going to ask you a question about that, actually, because um, as you were speaking, I was reflecting back on the webinars that I've been a member of, Paul. Um, and when, I've got the gentleman's name. I'll, I'll, I will make sure it's in the show notes. Um, he advises webinars and he does a podcast about effective webinars and a lot of the things it was about a year ago that he came on the show and a lot of the things he was saying um, you've been saying as well as needing a template a framework there's a process to this and because we're we're talking about online it inevitably it's a webinars you know um, that in a way we're talking about 
um, which is appropriate in a pandemic as well, isn't it? But get back to it. Um, reflecting back, how do you get the balance of it of education and sales? Because I've I've been on some webinars and they've promised it to show me something or solve something and it's just been a pitch from the beginning to end and they haven't fulfilled their promise i suppose i'm answering my own question to you i just haven't i because they haven't met their promise so where in this webinar process do you have to fulfill your promise to your audience that you fulfilled a problem and you shown them a solution before you go on to the other parts that we discussed Paul? Well first of all it's simply an arithmetic equation five parts step-by-step -step information one part offer. Right. That's that's the number five parts so in a one-hour presentation it's 50 minutes 10 minutes. In a half hour presentation, it's 25 minutes, five minutes. That makes sense? Yes. No yes. sales, no mention. You can mention your product. You can do what I call seeding. And there's a whole, in the sales program that I do on That's Ambitious, there's a whole section on seeding. For example, you can hold up, I don't know, do I have, uh, I'll have one of Every, my- Everybody currently listening to this is, is about to learn what seeding is. <laughs> yeah, so actually, uh, give me one second. I'll be right back. Yeah, sure. Okay, he's so so. So um, I'm just fascinated. So, do you think you know? Um, oh, he's back here. That was quick. So, in this book, uh, Suggestology, called "How to Get What You Want by Asking the Right Questions," I have a section in here that talks about the sales process and the secret psychology of persuasion, and it's a chapter called. And I would normally have this open to the place if I were seating during the presentation, but it's a chapter called um, When Worlds Collide. And in that chapter, there'll be specific information on how to do 18 steps to the back end of any presentation to sell a quarter of a million dollars in your first year in sales. Today, we only have time for step for, for steps one and two. So here's steps one and two. So what did I just do? I basically seeded the fact that there are 16 other steps. I held up a book during the presentation, which could be used as a bonus, right? The future bonuses that we're talking about at the end of the seminar and say, well, those that purchase today will get this book, you know, which is 2495. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's what we call seeding. So five parts, step-by-step -step information, one part, sales, but you can seed throughout as long as you're seeding value and they're getting information based on it. Don't consistently refer to how much things are. Don't consistently refer to the product that you're selling today. That's a big mistake. Really what you're doing is information in a step-by-step -step formula that solves a specific problem and value. Make so sure just to recap, cost. just to recap, because I've got one more question, then we call it a day. Um, is that you're saying it is a mathematical model, you know, four points information. Um, five. Five, yeah, with one point being the actual um, pitch in a way. And if you keep to that model, you're, you're not going to get that kind of response that I joined this webinar and I didn't learn anything and it was just entirely a pitch to buy something. So keep to that model. But my Kind of, and obviously, I want to see if Adrian, because Adrian's got a question. But the other question is um, do you think evolutionary, because of our evolutionary um, background, that you know, we are programmed to observe or think about short term threats? Um, we're not very good at observing um, processes or long term threats over the long term. I think we're designed to observe that tiger in, in the weeds or um, that predator that might attack us. Um, so we're also instinctively um, risk reducing um, engines. We're about reducing risk all the time. So we're looking for opportunity, but we instinctively all the time 
looking about reducing risk, and that comes from our biological um, heritage. Would you do you think there's some truth in that, or am I just talking rubbish? Or you've mooted? Totally true. People will psychologically filter everything you say. They will filter it by comparing it to things that they're, that, that, that they're familiar with. They will filter it based on previous experience. They will filter it based on bad experiences, being screwed before. They'll filter it any number of ways based on their, their history, okay? So the only equation, and this is what the, this specific sales, sales template is for, right? The, getting them past the tipping point. What is the tipping point? That's like the edge of buying. I'm on the edge of buying. The thing that will turn them back is fear. And the thing that will push them forward is faith. So they have to have faith that it will solve a specific problem for a reasonable cost. And so the only equation that matters is, and what this template aims to solve is value over cost. Value over cost. Yeah. If they can see the value. Yeah. And it's significantly more than what they have to pay. And I mean significant. It solves a very real problem for them and could potentially make them a lot of money. You have to understand, it's like, you know, remember, Jonathan, anything I say, I'm not saying to impress you. I'm saying to impress upon you. I, I get paid a lot of money as a consultant by some very powerful, established businesses. I'm probably one of the highest paid consultants in all of Canada from a, from a marketing standpoint. And I work with some very powerful business people. Um, I charge thousands of dollars a month for that, you know, for, for their privilege to work with me on something. For me to offer a $99 a month program in That's Ambitious, do you think that program is like out of thin air? Everything is made up on professional experience with legitimate companies and helping them make hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in some cases. Okay. Yeah. You don't think you can get a $99 idea from my courses. All I have to do is in the explanation and in the offer, make sure that the value that they're receiving seems greater than the cost they'll be paying. And I mean, significantly a five to one return on investment. Uh, for example, I made a, I made an investment in a course 15 years ago. That investment was money that I did not have. It was, 3,000 something US dollars, okay? That course netted me and I worked out the calculations the other day on the money that I had made from selling from the stage and from that first course that I took called Train and Trainer, which I now teach by the way. Um, my return on investment was 42,000%. Not 4%. Not, not, you know, RRSP or, or, you know, T4 or whatever they do in the United States or in Europe for, for savings accounts or whatever they call them. Not, not 2%, not 4%, not 40%, 401k, thank you. Not 40%, not 400%, not even 4,000%. 42,000% return on that investment. Nobody could ever say to me that I should make things up ever again. Just go to the people who have the information. I've sold millions of dollars with the products off yeah, the stage. My, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. And it's, it's a bit unfortunate, but I'm going to put this to you. I did say, um, but we, we, we gotta, we gotta be real here. There, um, especially in America and obviously Britain is changing. I don't know what the situation is in Canada. I always see Canada as a kind of halfway British and American <laughs> exercise in a way it's kind of the middle road of american britain um but in america <clears throat> that you know we are bombarded by a a whole whole online industry selling um lies basically they they said you know it's mixed with it's a concoction of Buy this course and buy into me the guru. That's and I'm not. I'm not saying in any shape or form this applies to you, Paul, because I wouldn't be putting this question to you if I thought that. But buy into this guru, um, buy into this lifestyle, and it, it's a mixture of health, 
uh, is a mixture of health, is a mixture of it's just your attitude. If you get the right attitude, if you program your brain in the right way, and they always throw in, what's it called, N NPL, um, linguistic neuro linguistic program. They always throw that into the into the mix as well. You know, I, I just occasionally um, join some of these free, and they always always throw that into the mix. And what's your point? My point is that it's a it, it's a nonsense it, it doesn't work it you go online and there's just thousands of people that you know got their credit card out where they didn't really afford it because they're looking for a dream they're looking for somebody to save them and nobody can save you the only person that can save you is yourself um so how do you but on the other hand, that's a very cynical thing because I do believe in training and I do in, in believe in self improvement. So, how you got any, you're, got any insights before we finish the show about how you avoid these charlatans? Well, that was, I think many people have those same thoughts. They approach everything by psychologically filtering it based on past experience. If they've been burned before, they believe that everyone's a charlatan and everyone's out to take their money and provide no value in return. Yeah. But you will never build a brand if you sell anything that you can sell based on a template like this and then not provide value. Yeah. And in the, at the end of the day, it all comes down to measurable results. If your program, your course, your product, or your solution does not provide measurable results, your brand will eventually erode. It doesn't matter how well you perform. It doesn't matter how well you sell it. Uh, in our company, we have a set of core values that we adhere to. And very first on the list is we add value to people's lives. And the next most important one is we honor our commitments. So if we yeah. make a commitment to you that's <clears throat> going to solve a specific problem, we're going to solve that problem and we're going to stick by that based on our return policy, based on everything. And if it's no questions asked, we give it back. That's part of our core values. So I understand you when you say uh, people can be programmed to buy. That's true. And they can be that you can use this template in those situations. You can put the wool, you can pull the wool over anybody's eyes. But that result will be very short-lived and eventually you'll just be looking for the next trick. And while this may be a good template, and it is, and it's a good solution, it's certainly not just a trick. If you have something of value, and it basically comes down to two things. One, does it add value to people's lives, right? And two, are you experienced enough to actually help them with that? So it's not regurgitating information. It's have you gone and created a measurable result yourself and have you created a step-by-step -step formula to get that result? Will everybody follow your advice? Not on your life. But you're not looking for everyone. You're looking for the 3% that will actually follow through. And that's all that number is, by the way. 15% will buy, 3% will follow through. Right, thanks for the answer. That was a fantastic answer, Paul. But I just thought I bought that because um, I think a lot of people, and I think they do become a bit cynical, and, um, and that's why they don't buy it for understandable reasons. Um, because I don't know if Adrian, but every time I go on YouTube, I'm bombarded um, by certain people with a certain message. Um, well, thanks for coming on the show, Paul. It's been a blast. We're going to call it a day, listeners and viewers, and we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you.